Chancellor, in the context of these outstanding achievements in the area of social enterprise, I would like to call on you to confer, confer on Sir Tim Smith an honorary doctorate of business administration from the University of Lincoln. By the authority vested in me by the university, I'm pleased to confer upon you the award of Doctor of Business Administration, honoris causa, and welcome you amongst us. Well done, Tim. Fantastic. Really good. It is with great pleasure that I invite our honoured guest, Sir Tim Smith, to address us. Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, Pro-Vice-Chancellor, us. What a pleasure it is. I am in the hallowed hall that made the home for my great hero, Sir Joseph Banks, who in the uh, chancel up there would sit and watch proceedings down here. So how appropriate that maybe I have a chance to say a few things about plants. I was told initially I had to speak in Latin, which was a bit terrifying, because um, I'm a bit rusty on my old Latin. Um, but I actually then was told I ought to tell you some of the things that I think might help you. Well, one of the things that you should first of all know is rarely listen to old farts who stand up at lecterns and tell you what to do. But I do have a couple of things I would like to share with you because I think you are genuinely living through a period of history which when history is told a thousand years from now will either be the death knell of our generation in terms of homo sap sap or a most wonderful flowering because we actually came to a point of realizing that we were one species separated by countries that didn't need to be separated so, that were separated by consumption behaviors which didn't need to be so. And I see the generation that you are about to lead mending our generation's damage as being the one where you learn that we need to move away from being little piglets at a trough, consuming, 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 and actually become citizens, fully grown up, fledged members of Homo Sap Sap. So my first piece of advice would be don't waste a single minute of your life trying to be the person that you think your parents wanted to be. Because by the time you are their age, you will realize they didn't have a clue. I know this to be true. The second thing is to trust your instincts. Stay away from people who tell you that success is something that happens to other people. This is a lie, which leads to point 2B, a metaphorical one, kill negative people. Don't allow negative people anywhere near you. They are alien spawn and should be put out of our misery as soon as possible because they have the ability to create a cancer of the soul that is almost instantaneous and it stops you being joyous, it stops you feeling that the world can be beautiful and it stops you actually feeling that the future remains ours to make. Before I end my so optimistic words, I want you to think about something. I'd like you to imagine you were looking at that ceiling and for a moment imagining your relatives a hundred years from now and imagine what they might be asking you if they could speak. That is how important a time I think it is to be alive right now. And gosh, am I so jealous of your youth. I wish I was you. I would, I would pull my teeth out to be you. But I'm not, and the joy will be yours. So let me tell you of one adventure I had. I learnt this year something really, really terrifying, that I am more scared of being thought a coward than actually being a coward. My youngest son asked me whether I would come and climb the biggest tree in the world which is in the Sierra Nevada mountains in California. And I hate heights. So I flew to California and I thought I was gonna buck out at the last moment and I got there and there is this tree. I want you to imagine a tree so big that its root is from this, this pillar to that pillar. It is enormous. Many people who live in those parts reckon it's bigger even than the General Sherman. And this monster, which I climbed, rather I lie, I was dragged up by two far stronger younger men. But I want to tell you what happens to you when you're about 300 feet up, a tree like that. It's got this bark that you can punch and it doesn't hurt. But when you get that high, suddenly the bark, bark becomes like, have you ever seen the feathers on an eagle where they suddenly become soft and downy around the neck, a bit like a cockerel. And suddenly the bark becomes like this and it becomes all new. And you're there and you look one way and you look forever, it feels, 
across Sequoia National Park and you see forever the sense of life and greenery and all you've got to do is to move your head 180 degrees and what you see then is Death Valley. And it's like a biblical choice that faces you. But then something really extraordinary happens and I want you to be on this journey with me. Your hand is on that tree and you suddenly realize this tree is 4,400 years old. This tree, to the best of my knowledge as an archaeologist, has outlived 37 different civilizations. From their start, to their zenith, to their death. Think about that. This tree has outlived them all. Now just imagine, each one of those societies that has been outlived was full of people called the Establishment. Well, I want you to go out into the world being brave about your knowledge, being brave about your independence and recognize at all times that that magnificent tree might know something that humans have missed. So trust in nature and also make sure you understand the most vital thing, the establishment of screwed it up time after time after time. Make sure you don't let it happen. Thank you very much.